as men come to embrace their Heavenly Mother and understand the Heavenly Mother, that it actually changes for them Mm -hmm. their relationship with the women around them. Okay, yeah. And so if we know that we are to live in divine partnership, right, that we know that this is essential for achieving the highest degree of glory, Mm -hmm. then that means that we as women and men both need to understand how to connect with the other. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Saints Unscripted. Today we are joined with the wonderful MacArthur Krishna. Um, We're super excited to have her on the show again. We had her on, I think, two years ago at the very beginning of COVID, but it was over like video. So it's awesome to have her in person. And also in honor of Women's History Month, um, this is even more a perfect topic because we're going to be talking about Heavenly Mother. So... We're super excited. MacArthur, do you want to just like let our viewers know a little bit about you and then we can get into this topic? I can, but that's probably the least interesting thing to talk about today. So, um, real quick, real quick, quick, quick recap. All right, quick, quick recap. Um, I was raised with my mother entering my bedroom singing the cougar fight song to like wake us up to do chores in the morning. So, there's like not a chance I was going to go anywhere other than BYU. Um, <laughs> I went to BYU twice for undergraduate and master's both, Um, especially the friends and the internships that I made there have been have been life enhancing for the last 30 years. Um, So that's a a good stead. I was a businesswoman, owned my own business for uh, more than a decade and then retired and moved to India um, for eight years and uh, took up all sorts of other exciting things like writing kids' books and working for a women's co-op and designing textile art and being a mother and being a wife and ah, all so sorts cool. of new adventures. Um, and then I'm here. How's that? Wonderful. Oh. That was that was amazing. <laughs> the best elevator pitch I've ever heard. And before we begin, I also like to mention that we have mes- uh, episodes on Heavenly Mother. So if you guys don't really know much about it before... We go into this episode. You can always watch the other ones uh, to get a little more understanding of what we believe and why we believe in Heavenly Mother. Other than that, MacArthur, take it away. Okay. So I can tell you I had a distinct memory when I was 12 years old where someone tried to convince me that it was our doctrine that women should be second-class citizens in Zion. 12 years old. I can remember this moment distinctly. I remember sitting there feeling this like upsurge of rejection Mm -hmm. that I could clearly feel that was not true. Mm -hmm. And so at that age, 12, I mean, that's pretty young. Yeah. Young and old, depending on which (laughs) view you're at, right? But like at 12 years old, I was very, very clear that that did not resonate as truth. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to kind of go down this path and think about it. But honestly, it wasn't until I started looking around and thinking about daughters and raising um, them that I began to say that, wait a second, we really need to have a vision for women of the church. Because I think in some ways, I think a lot of this comes from how I was raised with my, my mom, especially. Um, but like we had such a vision, I had such a vision that it didn't occur to me that other people didn't, right? Mm-hmm. And then when I started to raise daughters and realizing that our doctrine wasn't missing pieces, but how we communicated was missing pieces. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing actually came when um, my then friend and now co-author, we're still friends, but <laughs> friend and co-author um, came to me and said her three-year-old was reading a cartoon book of scriptures and said, where are the women in this book? I want to read stories about the women. Wow. I mean, here she was three years old, and she wanted to see herself in these scriptures. Yeah. So my friend picked it up, flipped through, and was like, sure enough, what, what in the world? This is yeah. a, a a cartoon book of stories that are supposed to inspire us from the Bible, and there's no inspiring women in the Bible? How could that possibly be, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And this was a number of years ago. The landscape on this has significantly changed. Yeah, because there are awesome women in the Bible. Yeah. Awesome women in the Bible have always been there, mm-hmm. and even now lots of awesome books on this. Mm-hmm. But in this time, there's not a single book. And not even in our faith, but she went out and looked at other Christian faiths, and no one had yeah. a children's book 
about women in the Bible and their faithful choices. So that's what actually launched the Girls Who Choose God series with Desert Book, where we did the Bible and the Book of Mormon and church history, because we saw that our daughters were wanting to have these role models, yeah. right? So we can hold up a superhero kind of, you know role model, or we can hold up these women who are making bold and brave and righteous choices. Yeah. And so we really thought it was important for our daughters to have this experience that they could look for someone. And then what happened is over the years, our daughters get older. They start asking more questions. They're tweens. Their bodies are starting to change. They have lots of things that they want to understand. And we realized that the ultimate female role model we have is our Heavenly Mother. And in fact, the gospel doctrine essay on this, not everyone knows this. Okay, so first of all, we should backtrack just a little mm -hmm. bit. One, um, the church's website has an essay on mother in heaven. So for anyone who doesn't know, one, that this is an acknowledged doctrine, that's an important thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On that essay, they also have a link to the Mother There article with Dr. Paulson and Martin Polito. And that was a comprehensive survey um, through history with all the mentions of Heavenly Mother. And what's important about that reference that the church cites in their essay is that no prophet or apostle has ever told us we should not speak of Heavenly Mother. Yeah. So for anyone who's watching this who might be unaware that that taboo was man-made, that's one of the false traditions. Mm -hmm. It's a false traditions of our 1960s era, actually, <laughs> and supposedly when that got propagated, uh -huh. um, that said we could not speak of her. And so when our daughters started to ask these questions and we realized that the church had an essay on this, and in the church's essay, it says that Heavenly Mother is our eternal prototype. That's the exact phrase. And so if we want to understand who we as women are growing to be, what our divine destiny is, then understanding that Heavenly Mother is our eternal prototype is really important. Yeah. And so what I see is that when I start to teach this to my daughters or lots of women that I talk to, they just start to spark, right? Because mm -hmm. truth sparks. And so for us, it's super exciting that this doesn't take a new revelation. It doesn't take some sort of um, switch, right? Some of the other things in our history take a direct revelation to change how we're doing things. This is actually already our doctrine. Yeah. So what we need to do is... Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. Teach it. Preach it. Talk about it. Find the ways that it blesses your life. And being aware through all of this that the truth of Heavenly Mother in no way dismisses or denigrates our heavenly father or Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. They're not jealous Greek gods fighting over who gets whose attention, who gets adoration for who, right? Like, yeah. like this is our eternal family. Mm -hmm. And we clearly understand that Christ is the vital way through the atonement that we get back to our heavenly parents. But Elder Oaks has said, our theology begins with heavenly parents. Our highest aspiration is to be like them. Mm -hmm. And if that is true, then we need to know about her. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That is a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think about how there is so much, so much focus in our gospel, in our religion about family, how family is essential family, the mother, the father, the children, yeah. the family unit. So like why on earth would it not be important for us to learn about? Or why own? in heaven would it not be important? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Why in heaven? Yes, <laughs> totally. Uh, and I know, speaking from myself, growing up in the youth and young men's priesthood and all that, we haven't really spoken much about Heavenly Mother. I don't mm -hmm. really know much about her. Mm -hmm. So what is the importance for like us young men, being priesthood, uh, deacons, priests, all that stuff, is learning about Heavenly Mother? Like, What's the importance for us also? Yeah. So I'm going to paraphrase badly. Okay. <laughs> but... Um, Martin Polito is one of the authors of a Mother There article. Mm -hmm. So this is the article that's cited on the church's website. Mm -hmm. Just So just to like lay this groundwork, when I talk about Heavenly Mother, I always use prophets and apostles, female church leaders, things that are on the church's website. Yeah. So people do not have to um, be curious about where things are coming from. If mm -hmm. you want to be curious on your own, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're speaking to me, this is how I, this is the channel I flow in. Right. Um, so Martin says this beautiful thing about that as men come to embrace their Heavenly Mother and understand the Heavenly Mother, that it actually changes for them mm -hmm. their relationship with the women around them. Okay, yeah. And so if we know that we are to live in divine partnership, 
right, that we know that this is essential for achieving the highest degree of glory, Mm -hmm. then that means that we as women and men both need to understand how to connect with the other. Yeah. And men don't have a lot of experience in this. Yeah. Right. And so having this understanding, having the framework that our heavenly parents are the pattern, right? That we have this divine eternal pattern means that it is an onus Mm -hmm. on men to understand how 50% of the pattern works. Right. Yeah. (laughs) And so (laughs) women are taught a lot about how the male 50% of the pattern works. Mm Men, frankly, have to choose because yeah. it's not necessarily fed to you the way that it's fed to us. Yeah, it's definitely right? not, yeah. <laughs> and so you, 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 <laughs> not, <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> okay. um, anyone, but men especially, have mm-hmm. to choose whether or not this is something that they're going to value, which is, are right. you going to value the other 50% of the partnership, yeah. right? Are you going to understand what that eternal model looks like? Yeah. And I think if you understand the eternal model of how Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother work together, the Gospel Doctrine essay talks about that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother work together for our salvation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Like if you don't have that framework in your mind, then you're missing the model, Yeah. yeah right? In some ways, you're missing what your whole life's about. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, this is a great way to like understand that. Yeah, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are here to help us be like them. Like exactly, my whole life through the church, I've been taught be like Jesus, be like God, be mm-hmm. like that. Go, 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 go. But yeah, like, we're missing the Heavenly Mother aspect. Right. And then, yeah, like like you said, if we when we involve her, then we get the full picture. Then we exactly. get the full understanding mm-hmm. what we actually aspire to be and what our plan is, essentially. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so in my mind, if you if we have told that this is the divine pattern and Heavenly Mother is an eternal prototype, if you're trying to put together a prototype of something mm-hmm. and you're missing one leg of the stool, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Then then the balance is off. Mm-hmm. And that does not again say that there's a lack in Jesus and the atonement. Mm-hmm. But saying that Heavenly Mother is not present means that you're saying women are not present, right? right? And quite frankly, the plan doesn't work if you don't have mm-hmm. both. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I have a question. I've really been wanting to ask you. Ooh. So <laughs> in, um, in the Gospel Topics essay on Heavenly Mother, um, it talks about how we, I mean, we don't pray to Heavenly Mother. Mm-hmm. We're taught um, to follow like the pattern that Jesus Christ mm-hmm. teaches. Or President Hinckley taught follow. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Yep. Yes, right there. Yep. Um, and my question is, how then do we develop a relationship with our Heavenly Mother if we're not speaking to her in the way that we speak to Heavenly Father? Yeah. Well, we are told to have a relationship with Christ, but we don't pray to Him. True. Mm-hmm. That's a really yeah, good that's, answer. Yeah. Yeah. So so what do you do, I guess? to if- I pray to Heavenly Father. Mm-hmm. Um, But I am very aware of my mother. And I feel that understanding that I have a mother's love and a father's love is vital. They're different. And it's important to me to embrace both of those. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that my co-author says that when she cooks up a meal for her family, that she feels that she is modeling Heavenly Mother because my co-author loves food (laughs) and she loves sustenance and she loves nurturing and she loves, like she works on food security and she works on helping people with low-income food. Like this food is her thing, right? So if you walk into her kitchen, it's like boom, boom, right? (laughs) Because you can just see the amount of like loving churn that's happened in that place, Uh right? If I get asked to make dinner, and I step into the kitchen, I feel like I've walked into one of the layers of Dante's Inferno. <laughs> it is I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> not my happy place. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. In fact, so I was living in India. This is a little bit of a mischievous story, right? <laughs> so I didn't want to get married because I thought I was going to have to cook. Mm-hmm. And it was such Fulfill a... those like right, traditional roles. Right, like... Yeah. like I want to be with my children. That's like the choice I want to be. I, my, for the record, none of this game plan has come true. So that's what's funny. I was going to be a part-time professor because I, uh, my dad was a professor and I loved that idea. Mm-hmm. I was going to be a part-time professor and a full-time mom. And 
But that meant in my head that I was going to have to cook, right? Because that was the model that got handed to me. And so my mother, of course, being diligent and a lovely mother, kept giving me these skills, right? Like, Uh you have to learn how to do this. And then very quickly, I learned in college that it was my night to rotate in the dorms. It was my night to cook dinner that I could order out. (laughs) What a trick. Sure can. <laughs> Someone else could take care of that. Uh-huh. And then I could actually make that money to pay for that by doing things that I loved. Mm-hmm. So then I had a very wise roommate, and she told me when I was running my business, she said, what happens if you had to cook for all the people in your firm? How would you do that? If you had to feed them, how mm-hmm. would you do this? And I came up with like five ways to do this. She said, you notice none of those involves you cooking, right? Like like creative problem solvers in such a way that you could actually get married, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, That's so funny. I get married. Uh-huh. I move to India. We have a cook because it's very normal in India if you're a middle class family to have a cook. And my mother called me up. She's like, you cheated, <laughs> right? <laughs> you totally got off the hook for this. And so... That is not how I have a relationship with my mother, Kevin. But I want to say that Heavenly Mother loves us. It says in the gospel essay that she and the Father are involved in our lives. So with whatever way works, because we're all different, um, you're following the guidelines. You reach Heavenly Mother as your heart and soul desires. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Like I've learned too much, I feel like. I learned so much. Um you you learned the fifty percent you were missing yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> um, where where can people find you? Like outside of Saints and Scripture, where where are you in sure. the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so We write books, Mm -hmm. Bethy and I, because we believe in teaching our children gospel truths. And um, so you can find our books um, at Desert Book Mm -hmm. or on Amazon. Um, The Girl's Guide to Heavenly Mother. Okay, this is another quick story for you. We write for girls. All of our girls who choose God, girls who have a mother, we write for girls. And I started to make it public that we were writing this book. And a woman got a hold of me and said, can you please make this for children? Can you make this for boys? And I was like... No, right? <laughs> we're going to talk about wombs and hips and stuff like this. Like, I'm not putting that in a boy's book. Like, I'm not doing it. And, she said, and I said, but send me an email, send me a message, and you can tell me what you have in mind or why, mm-hmm. why are you asking this? So I was expecting like a bleep, 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 like three bullet points, right? Yeah. And she sent me this like. <laughs> she was a mother of five sons. Wow. And she said, I am important to my sons. Mm-hmm. Of course, why wouldn't Heavenly Mother be important to them too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's what I want my sons to understand. And I looked at that and I was humbled. Mm -hmm. And I thanked her for it because that's the reason we wrote the boy's guide to Heavenly Mother. So now there's a girl's guide to Heavenly Mother and a boy's guide to Heavenly Mother because that woman asked for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we didn't want to write it on our own because I'm not a boy. So we called Martin Polito, who is the author of the article that we mentioned before Mm -hmm. um, that's listed on the church's website. And we said, Martin, you clearly understand this. You're a scholar on this. You understand why this matters, man. Can you write this with us? And so Martin joined us for that book. And so they're actually the structurally, they're the same. um, But the content's completely different because Mm -hmm. men and women think about things in different ways. And so that was a great place. But anyone who has an interest in this, I recently gave a keynote and 80 women were in the room and only three women knew that we had a gospel essay on Mother in Heaven. So 77 more women got to understand this was our doctrine and that we're allowed to speak of her. And so absolutely, if you have not read the essay, read it yes. and read it slowly. Yeah. Because people all at the same time say there's not much there or it's really short. Yeah, yeah, but it's meaty. There are some rich gospel truths in that essay and important. And so like start there. And then you have all the footnotes, you know, that say where these things came from, from prophets and apostles and from the research um, from the Mother There article. Read that, yeah. right? And there is so much to go from there that if you start even with that exact thing, there are so many places there's so much prophets and apostles have said on this that actually the assumption, because that's always, I first get, we may not even know we had one, right? Yeah. <laughs> but once we pass, we've had one. And then we get past the taboo angle. Then I get the, we don't know very much. Mm-hmm. And I think that just means you haven't keyword searched heavenly parents on, you know, LDS.org, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Or heavenly mother. Like there's actually plenty of information. 
And I would also say we don't need a whole Bible on Heavenly Mother, right? Mm -hmm. We need some principles that can change our lives. And so if the Gospel Essays has five main principles that I've pulled out, that are, these are key things that we learn from the Gospel Essays topic. These are the key things the church wants us to understand about Heavenly Mother. Those things alone would revolutionize how we live. And we're not even doing that. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much again. Any questions or comments that you have for MacArthur, write them in the comments. Like and subscribe, and we will see you again soon. Awesome. Bye, guys. See ya. Oh, that was great. Hoorah.